Before we get into the video guys, I am giving away 11,500 Apex coins. To be with a chance of winning them, make sure you are subbed to this channel, drop a like on the video and leave a comment down below. More details within the video description. What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Now excuse my voice, I have got a man flu and it's absolutely killing me. But I've still got to continue on with making content for you guys. Today I bring you another Apex Legends video and today I bring you tips and tricks you need to know. And well, some are fun, some are utterly useless too, which I've seen and picked up from other places, tried myself and are just absolutely pointless. But we will cover them all people. But before we go any further guys, if you do enjoy the video and would like to show your support, you can by smashing that like button. Okay, so we all know of the running and sliding features. Sliding maximizes speed going down hills. We also all know about climbing too. If you don't, well, you can almost scale anything to a certain height. Even if there are obstacles in front of you, aiming for different spots allows you to climb virtually anything and any small building. This is already known, everybody knows about this. But my favorite feature about climbing, which not many people know about is peeking over walls. This can be done by climbing a wall but letting go of that jump button or that climb button at the top and it will leave you peeking over the edge and this is very useful in seeing what's going on in the areas going forward. So flying. This one for me was annoying. I would always jump out of the ship first but always get to my position of interest last. I just didn't know what I was doing wrong as I've seen people just fly over me like they had rockets up their asses. Well, I've actually figured it out, people. And there's actually a simple trick to maximize your flying speed and your travel distance, and it's relatively easy. So when you jump out of the ship, using the info on the left of your screen, the speed, you want to use like a dipping maneuver. So once you jump from the ship, holding up on your left analog, but using your right analog to do the dipping maneuver, you need to maintain a speed between 145 and 130-ish. To do this, use your right and lug stick to dip so you are looking down. Once speed is at about 145, pull up again and it will reach that 145 as soon as you start dipping. So it's literally fly straight, dip a bit, fly straight, dip a bit, fly straight, dip a bit and you will shoot across the map. So to put it into simple man's terms, jump out the ship holding up on your left analog stick, keeping an eye on the numbers of speed on the left hand side of your screen. Use the right analog stick to dip. This speed will slow down if you're pointing forwards. So you want to use your right analog stick and slightly push up so you go into a dip mode. And as soon as you see that speed raising to that 145 mark, you want to pull back on that right analog stick so you're facing forward again. When that speed drops to about 135 again, do exactly the same thing and rinse and repeat people and you will shoot across the map like Rocket Knight Adventures. Not like many of you guys remember that old school game, but yes, this is my opinion is the fastest way of getting across the map and maximizing travel distances. Also guys, using balloons mid-game to maximize travel distance. So mid-games when you find a balloon and you want to use it to travel to or away from whatever you're trying to do, you can actually maximize travel distance by using this simple tip and it works wonders guys. So when you approach a balloon and you are heading up that rope, make sure your pointer is in the right direction of where you want to travel and just look up towards the sky. Hold this position until you fly off of the balloon. As soon as you are in mid-air, hold that free lock button, which will be left trigger for console players. Here if the balloon you are using is near mountains or hilltops, direct your legend towards these. When you get close to them, you will notice a boost will happen and you will travel upwards slightly giving you a little more momentum going forward and allowing you to go even further. If you use this on the tops of hills or mountain sides correctly, you can see up to 10 boosts allowing you to travel even further until you eventually land. Remember when using this tip though, don't land upon the mountain sides or hilltops, just use them as boosts. So fly relatively close to them, as soon as you see that boost happen, just head forward away from the mountain top so you don't land upon them. And again, this does obviously work best when you're next to a mountain top or mountains or canyons. So you can use the walls of the canyon to travel further. And it really does help you escape or get to a certain position relatively quick. So try it out people and hope it helps you out. Now when playing with randoms and not having any other communication other than the in-game pings, it's helpful to know what you can and can't ping, where you can basically ping anything from weapons to enemies, but there are also more options available by you holding that ping button. Check them out on screen now. Someone's been here. Listen, let's move here. Contact. I'm going to check over there for loot. I'm going to explore here. Going to explore over there. 
Hold tight. I'm gonna defend over there. Gonna spy on that area. Cancel that. Okay guys, so did you know you can select a local server to maximize game performance and minimize lag? The server appears mostly at random and on the main Apex Legends screen where it indicates you to press that A button to continue, sometimes it appears here in the bottom left corner of the screen. But it's random as heck for most people. But I figured a way on how you can get this to pop up so you can select a certain server. When at this screen, simply keep logging in and out of your profile. Doing this about 3 or 4 times should make this menu pop up. Once you do get to pop up, you will notice it appear in the bottom left of your screen and it will tell you to use your analog to pull the menu up, which allows you to pick your local server to connect to, which is great. Another thing I highly recommend you trying and that is changing a few controller settings. Obviously console players only, but hey it may work on PC too. So go into your settings, select controller and pan down to response curve. Here you should have it on classic which is respawn's natural first person shooting feel. This for me helped me out a ton and just made my overall game much much better. Also a setting to change and try is luck dead zone. Now my first instance with this was with Red Dead Redemption and it's through this game in which I understand how this works. Now it's kinda hard to explain but for me imagine there are two targets next to each other A and B. Let's say they are separated by about 5 feet. You shoot A then pull your aim to B while in your head and the control of your analogs you are used to this was on target, but somehow when playing you shoot and it's off target. Have you ever quickly shifted your aim onto someone's head and overdone it by a little bit or underdone it by a little bit and never really knew why as in your mind it was perfect? While me turning this look dead zone completely off, done this trick, I no longer over aim when I feel it was perfect. And the difference for me now is crazy good. I do recommend you trying this out, but always remember your standard settings as a backup just in case this doesn't feel right to you but it definitely made a difference to me. I had a problem of over aiming and under aiming when I felt my aim was on target. Turning this look dead zone off completely eliminated that feeling. So try it out people. Also guys, you are obviously aware of Caustic and his gas traps and these things going off whether you are near them or you shoot them. But were you aware of their weak spots? At the bottom of the trap is a little red band going around the entire trap. If you shoot this, the trap kind of deflates and disappears without exposing any gas at all. Be careful though as these are pretty hard to hit at a distance but this is an easy way to get rid of them within those instances the caustic either uses them to barrier himself into a building or if they're blocking your path so yeah guys i hope this helps you out okay so now we're going to move on to a few useless tips i've seen and tried and to be honest are just completely pointless now some of these tips i've seen get a lot of publicity but to be honest are just quite useless and just just don't work at all so we have two instances, firstly Gibraltar's portable shield. So firstly someone in your team needs to be using lifeline and someone needs to be using Gibraltar. Lifeline puts down her healing drone and then Gibraltar places his shield on top of that healing drone. If done right, Lifeline can then push the drone along the floor allowing the shield to move a few feet. I saw this get overhyped and thought there was no way this would be useful to anybody and I was right, it's utterly useless. Next up's Rafe's portal insta kill. So I saw a clip where someone claimed if you use Rave's dimensional rift, her ultimate ability outside of a building, run into the building, drop the rift and then close the door. If an enemy is to run through the portal, they will hit the door leading to their instant death. So I tried this and did it work? No it didn't. It led to me being utterly destroyed. So yeah guys, pro tip, don't use this. Something else I picked up on while messing around, did you guys know you can inspect weapons? Not many people know about this, but hey you can inspect your weapon. If you hold left on your d-pad, you will inspect the weapon you are holding. You can also inspect grenades you are holding, pretty cool. But did you guys know, while holding nothing, you can inspect your hands. And yes, you crack your knuckles. Nice addition, respawn truly have thought of everything. Okay so let's move on to that level cap. Did you even know there was one? And did you know once you hit it, you can actually continue to level up and even check that level too. 
While the level cap is currently 100, once you hit this level in game, you won't raise any further but you still have an XP bar which you can keep filling up and earning those legend tokens, giving you reason to continue playing. But guys, there's actually a site which tracks your levels after hitting 100. The site is Apex Tracker which you'll find linked within the video description. They're having technical issues at the minute but it should be resolved by the time this video gets out there. Currently it's PC only but I have been reassured Xbox and PS stats will be live soon. So yeah guys, once you hit that level 100 cap in game, you can keep track of your actual true level once you level past 100 on Apex Tracker. And lastly guys, this map on screen now showcases all high tier loot locations with the percentage of times the high tier loot will spawn into said locations. You may want to screenshot this or check out the website in the video description where this is from. But guys, on that note, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really does help out. If you are new around here and enjoy daily Apex Legend videos like guides, top fives, gameplays, reviews, just about everything, make sure you subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button but guys thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully i will see you on that next one